Welcome students to Chemistry 1510 video notes. We're going to talk about Chapter 5, Gases. So let's go ahead and start off with the basics and discuss pressure. We're going to define pressure first. Pressure is when you have a force over an area. You see this when you look at balloons. So if we consider balloons, inside of balloons there are gas molecules that are trapped. And these gas molecules are zooming around in all directions, colliding with the sides of the balloon. And when they collide with the sides of the balloon, they end up exerting the pressure, which makes it uh, inflate. So in addition to something like gases inside a balloon, there's also uh, gases all around us, you know, what we call air. And that is exerting a pressure that we call atmospheric pressure. So we have a device that can measure atmospheric pressure. It's called a barometer. We have one in the lab if you'd like to see it. Whereas we have another device that can measure the pressure of um, contained gases, and that's called a manometer. So here is an example of a manometer over here. The manometer has an area where the gas is located and then it has this U-shaped tube with mercury inside. So you'll notice I drew some gas molecules above the liquid because whenever you have a liquid, there's always going to be gas molecules above it. And in this case, those gas molecules are trapped. And those trapped gas molecules are zooming around all over the place, hitting the sides of the container, traveling down into this U-tube and exerting a pressure which is forcing the mercury to be pushed downward in this U-tube, creating a difference over here on the left-hand side of the arm. So when this was first filled, the atmospheric pressure, so what's out here, right? This is the pressure of the atmosphere. And what was inside the container were the same. They were at 760 torr. And this isn't just in this instance. This is always. It, depending upon where you live, right? We're assuming atmospheric pressure is a 760 torr because most of us are at sea level. So when we consider this, now if we have something that uh, is higher on this side, that means that the pressure of the alcohol is greater than the atmospheric pressure. And so we have to take the pressure of the atmosphere and add the 50 millimeters of mercury to get the pressure inside uh, the vessel. So that's the pressure of the alcohol. So if we assume the pressure of the atmosphere is 760, then we add 50 to that and we get 810 torr. Speaking of torr, we don't always use torr. We can also convert to other units as we see here. 760 millimeters of mercury is the same as 760 torr. And then this is equivalent to one atmosphere. You'll notice that there's quite a few pascals in an atmosphere and in uh, some torr. And we tend not to use pascals as often, even though it's technically the standard unit called an SI unit. We uh, use atmospheres quite a bit, but you can also see from this diagram over here where millimeters of mercury came in. Right, because over onto the left side, oops, onto the left side, we saw millimeters, and that was millimeters of mercury in that U tube. So let's do a quick conversion to make sure that we feel confident converting for converting between units. So if we want to take the 4.5 atmospheres and convert that to torr, we are going to say that one atmosphere is equivalent to 760 torr. And this right here, infinite sig figs, 
because it's a definition. So when you put that in your calculator and you get 3,420 tour, what will end up limiting your significant figures is the atmospheres here, that four and a half atmospheres. And so in actuality, we will round to 3,400 tour. All right, that's our short introduction to pressure. When we come back, we are going to look at the combined gas law. Thanks for your attention. This is Katoni signing out.